Mr. Abhishek and thank you, Chairperson. A uh, very good evening to all of you. Uh, a very nice topic, type 2 diabetes and exercise, where do we stand? So I don't know where do we stand, but according to the clinical trials, we are much ahead of our time. But when it comes to the patient, we are still there. Doctor, you have to give some advice, you don't have to do any exercise. So let me start uh, by giving my own example so that we could relate better to, the, to this topic. Uh, I very proud, proudly say that I'm a marathon runner and I have done not the full marathon, but I have done four, five half marathons and uh, maybe 10 kilometers multiple times. So seven years back, I thought round lethe time. I went, I was going to my ward and I thought ki yare, teen manzil chadne mein bhi saans phulta itni kam age mein. So what is the problem? And I had a history of GDM. So I was scared that I might, you know, just develop diabetes very soon with a strong family history of diabetes. That led me to the fact that let's start exercising and uh, with practice and all, it's been seven years, some kind of exercise, be it aerobic exercise or be it resistance training or yoga or running, I, I usually do some kind of exercise. So that was my disclaimer. So as we all know that the burden of diabetes is ever increasing and uh, not only when we have patients, we talk about medical nutrition therapy and pharmacotherapy, we should always, always guide our patients about the use of exercise and its benefits. So physical activity is something which is any movement above rest. That's the difference between the two. And exercise is a structured movement to improve our fitness. And both of these are now recommended by the American College of Sports Medicine and ADA. So, so when we talk about ex exercise, it is about the frequency, intensity, and the modality. Modality means the volume of exercise, which we'll discuss shortly. And when, when do we measure all this? So aerobic exercise intensity is usually the maximum heart rate percentage and maximum oxygen consumption. VO2 generally we can't measure, but yes, maximum heart rate we can do. One important other tool is the rating of perceived uh, exertion. It is not a validated tool, but yes, when we exercise and we don't have the uh, pedometer or the accelerometer or the measurement of heart rate, we can usually uh, say that RP of 12 is theoretically correlating to our heart rate of 120 beats per minute. So what are the benefits of physical activities? So everybody is well aware about it and we have so many randomized control trials which say that one, it helps in the preventing and management of type 2 diabetes and two, in the type 2 diabetes reversal. So the comprehensive lifestyle intervention, they say that at least this everybody knows that 150 minutes of moderate or 75 minutes of vigorous aerobic exercise daily with a combined of uh, combination of low fat diet would definitely increase in the reversal prevention and management of diabetes. So a weight loss target of, of around 5 to 10 percent is ideal and there has been a number of randomized control trials which uh, say or which have a say in this. So this was a very nice trial which was done which said that calorie restriction and matched weight loss from exercise and it was seen uh, and the glu uh, independent and additive effects on gluco-regulation and increting system was seen in overweight men and women. Another beautiful program was this diabetes prevention program which has been going on for years and 20 years back when it came it said uh, and the participants were uh, engaged in 150 minutes per week of exercise uh, of moderate physical activity and the target weight loss was around 7% and it was seen that the uh, incidence of type 2 diabetes reduced by around 58%. So again, uh, higher adherence to these physical activity, adherence is again a major issue, uh, helped in achieving over 90% risk reduction. Now the, this program has been updated and it is seen that the focus has been shifted not only from weight loss but from weight loss to physical activity. Now it has been seen that now the aim is not the 5 to 7 percent body weight loss but 4 to 4 percent weight loss with physical activity that is 150 minutes per week and a decrease in HbA1c of around 0.2 to 0.6 percent. Another nice trial in this was the resolve trial, we will not go into the details. But here it was seen that the patients who were divided into three groups, moderate resistance, moderate endurance, high resistance, moderate endurance, and moderate resistance with high endurance. And it was seen that after a three-week supervised program, plus 11 uh, months of 
self management or unsupervised program led to the most uh, reduction in the visceral fat over a year then came the then comes the other benefit of uh, weight loss or, or the exercise is the type 2 diabetes reversal so there are so many patients even with 5 to 7 hours uh, of per week of leisure activity or moderate to intense activity it was seen that they were it was inversely related to the developing of type 2 diabetes mellitus however it was also seen that which we also know that there are patients who have this weight variability issues and around 10 to 30 percent of people with type 2 diabetes may not have any improvement in the fa fasting glucose or hba1c in fact even after following a lifestyle uh, therapy program but it definitely did reduce the number of glucose medications so this is a diagram which shows the effect of exercise on multiple levels of body including your liver pancreas blood vessels muscles brain and the fat and it includes both your aerobic and the resistance training then came the look ahead trial uh, which was the action for health in diabetes and the subjects were uh, divided into two groups one was the lifestyle intervention the other was the diabetes support group and uh, with education only so uh, patients who were in the intervention group had a restricted calorie diet and aimed at 175 minutes of unsupervised exercise per week and it was seen that by end of one year around 20.4 percent in had an increase in their fitness level so now again was this diadem trial and again it was seen that at the end of the one year of follower patients with lifestyle and a control group 61 percent no longer had type 2 diabetes and 33 percent participants got uh, went into remission so now comes the important part that what kind of exercise would suit which patients and how to follow this so there have been talk about the aerobic exercise the resistance exercise the high interval training and the breaks in the sedentary behavior so when we talk about aerobic exercise so it has always been said hamar paas bhi patient aayenge will always say ki aap walk kar liya karo so that's the easiest way for us to say to a patient ki aap kuch nahi karo at least 30 to 35 minutes walk hi kar liya karo aur walk bhi log kaise karte hain we all know gappe marte hue with a jhund and they'll go keep on walking which has got no benefit so when you train or when you see patients and when you tell them about it so it should be at least 150 minutes per week of moderate intensity ex moderate aerobic activity and by moderate intensity i mean when the patient is walking he should not be able to talk or complete a full sentence and he should be breathless that is what is meant by moderate intensity and you should not have more than two days of consecutive rest days in between then is your resistance exercise the worst part about prescribing a resistance exercise is the patient non compliance patient would always say dumbbell se to mere ko karna hi nahi aata mere ko chot lag jayegi aur i don't know how to use a resistance band but then i think we should all follow this and make videos or sh share videos with patients that how to use this resistance band and the training and this resistance can be either free weights or way by weight machines body weight elastic resistance band or by going to a gym so uh, the ada again recommends that 2 to 3 days per week with moderate vigorous training moderate intensity means this is important more repetition but not more than 15 with lighter weights or as the patient can tolerate and vigorous is less repetitions between 6 to 8 and with a maximum weight which they can carry so there were these two trials which compared aerobic exercises versus resistance exercise for glycemic trial and it was seen that the hard d trial and the uh, dare trial and it was seen that the concurrent training efficiently reduced the hba1c as compared to the either of the control group so resistance training and uh, aerobic training went together put together would have a benefit and a much better reduction in hba1c improvement in physical activities and other modalities of diabetes so this was the study uh, the hard d and the dare trial now comes the high intensity interval training so this is specifically for patients who say or people who say that we don't have time for exercises so high intensity interval training usually takes 15 to 20 minutes that is 75 minutes of vigorous exercise per week some drawbacks about high intensity interval training is one you need to be very cautious about the injury but there are trials which i studied which says that 
if the patient is fit, then there was there are not many studies which say that the patient had more injuries during the uh, HIIT. So what do we do in HIIT? You do a from between 10 seconds to 4 minutes. So you have a 10 seconds on and a 12 second off, or you can increase and up to 4 minutes on and 5 minutes off. So this is about the high intensity interval training. So in this high intensity, your heart rate should be around 90 percent or 75 to 95 percent of the maximum limit. Okay, so high intensity definitely improved fasting, HbA1c, home IR, and reduced the abdominal fat from waistline. Another interesting uh, thing is the breaking up of the sedentary activity. So breaking up of the sedentary activity means that usually uh, if we have more than eight hours of sedentary uh, activity like lying down or sitting or reclining, so every one hour extra of sedentary activity would increase the risk of type 2 diabetes by 22% which is very alarming. So how do we break it? So in office what we can do is we can do, so we are sitting, we can take a 30 minutes walk or if we have, so in good corporate hospitals we have a, uh, what do you call, treadmill, so we can do an inclined walk for 10-15 minutes or we can just sit there, do the calf raises or half squats. I don't know how do we do half squats in the hospital but yes it is said that patients with these kinds of activity would definitely improve or there would be a reduction in the type 2 related uh, type 2 diabetes related complications another one is the three minutes of light activity like walking every 30 minutes when you have that sedentary lifestyle behavior and it is very commonly seen nowadays with work of home, work from home after covid so there are so many youngsters people who are now working from home and the lifestyle has become so sedentary so this was this article, there was two good studies which said that the breaking up of excedentary life would be better. This is a very good chart and I think everybody knows about this. This chart or this table has details about how much exercise or uh, can be done in these four types of exercises. This we have discussed. So special consideration, few more minutes. So exercise timing relative daytime and meals, very frequently asked questions from the patients. कि एक्सरसाइज कब करें सुबह टाइम नहीं होता शाम को टाइम नहीं होता व्हेन डू वी डू एक्सरसाइज खाने के बाद तो पेट भरा रहता है सो सो ग्लूकोज मेटाबॉलिज्म आल्सो फॉलोस अ सर्कैडियन रिदम सो अकॉर्डिंग टू इट एक्सरसाइजिंग इज वुड बी बेस्ट एट द मॉर्निंग आवर्स बट देयर आर सो मेनी ट्रायल व्हिच से दैट एक्सरसाइज डन जस्ट बिफोर द मील्स और आफ्टर द मील्स इज आल्सो इक्वली गुड as it improves the postprandial insulin sensitivity. So this is now what we call exercise deserts. So exercise desert is something that reduces postprandial spikes. Now in this post meal activities like walking or a brief high intensity training would improve the glycemic control. This comes in the exercise deserts. Or if we do some longer duration of activity like 45 minutes before a meal, then it also and short burst exercises then also it can be beneficial but the national health says that any found kind of physical activity is better as long as the patient is doing it so that is the bottom line of everything benefits of other types of exercise being in india being in india we should always always focus on yoga i think that that connects you more with people in general that yoga is definitely uh, a good kind of exercise one it should be the trainer should know that you should always do a khali deep breathing exercise ke badle, that the yoga uh, trainer should also tell you how to do a uh, weight loss yoga training rather than only doing the breathing exercise which typically a yoga uh, trainer would ask you to do patients who have osteoarthritis can be uh, uh, can do swimming and aquatic fitness other kinds of exercises then comes the supervised versus unsupervised Personally, I always feel that if you have a personal trainer with you, he can always train you better and the uh, benefits are more. But the cost of having a personal trainer is really high. But it was actually seen that when you do a supervised training, you have a reduction, better reduction as compared to an unsupervised exercise in HbA1c, insulin sensitivity, body composition, blood pressure and HDL cholesterol. So in my mind, um, supervised is definitely better if we can afford. And then few things about the minimizing risk related to exercise. What about medical evaluation? Patients who are into low or moderate intensity exercises need not to have a 
preclinical evaluation while you, when starting the exercise. But yes, for middle-aged and older people who want to do high-intensity interval training, there should be some kind of medical fitness or the exercise or ECG stress training, especially for patients who complain of chest pain or breathlessness. Also, patients who have proliferative retinopathy or peripheral neuropathy should undergo testing before going in for these exercises. Then, uh, ideally, the because it's said that the uh, diabetic patients, they have a higher heat-related issues. That is, they have the reduced capacity to dissipate heat and they go easily into dehydration. Ideal condition should be a gym or a room where there is air conditioning and they are well hydrated with good breaks. Then uh, you have minimizing exercise induced hypoglycemia, especially in patients who are using insulin. You should decrease the insulin pre-meal bolus by around 25 to 75% depending on the kind of exercise that patient is doing. And now comes the objective monitor monitoring of physical activity. Few words about it. I feel and everybody feels that if you have some motivation, if you have some motivation, if you have some motivation, so you definitely feel motivated that I should walk more to complete those 10,000 steps. So you have pedometer and accelerometer and you have these smart watches and mobile applications. But I still feel Please that conclude you, me. Yeah, I'll just take half a more minute. So this was a trial which said that if you have been, you are monitored uh, your exercise, then it will be better. <laughs> Barriers are so many, but uh, yes, glucose management, diabetes related complication, fear of hypoglycemia, lack of tailored recommendation is I think the greatest barrier because patients ko yehi samaj nahi aata that what kind of exercise we should do. So lack of tailored recommendation I think is there. And yes, that happiness which comes uh, with good workout is definitely something which we should all feel with the release of endorphins and I must say that everybody should get into some kind of physical activity. Thank you very much for your patience with me.